Hello YouTube friends, Dennis here. Welcome back to another video. Today we're diving into a really cool tool called NNN. So if you ever wanted to automate your workflows without coding too much, then this is definitely something that you want to check out. Uh, some of you guys have been asking for shorter videos and something that is digestible and something that you can implement right away. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing today. Many of you guys have watched my previous automation videos and wanted to do some automation, but might not have an active pieces account. But maybe you do, but you would like to explore some free alternatives out there. And a lot of you guys have mentioned NNN and due to a popular demand, I'd like to start a video series dedicated to NNN as well for those looking for a great uh, automation platform. So NNN, if you're not familiar with, is an op open source uh, platform or tool for automating your workflows. And a lot of people would compare it to something like make.com and it's very similar to active pieces due to its flexibility except that it's been around longer and have more integrations it's known for its flexibility since it's highly customizable and you can build your workflows that suits your needs it's also open source which means that you can host it yourself and have uh, full control over your data so no coding is required and while it's powerful enough for developers, it's also user-friendly for non-coders. Community support is also great, and there's an active community around N8N. Uh, this means that you can find help and resource easily. So in today's video, instead of doing an automation, we're going to go and get this series started by getting NNN up and running on your own host or cloud server. I will give you guys a couple of options, and I will let you decide which option will work best for you. I will show you briefly how to run it locally on your own machine. Then we will move on and I'll show you guys how to run it on the cloud for cheap or for free. And I'll show you guys how to set it up in Google Cloud platform first using Docker and Docker Compose. Uh, then later on, we will switch gears and I'll show you how to run it inside of Render uh, with Superbase instance as a bonus. I'll show you how to run it in Railway, which is one of my favorite way of running this type of services. So if you're new to my channel, my name is Dennis and I'm a principal software engineer and I make videos on coding, AI and automation. Without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the video. All right, so let's run through the installation process if you want to install NNN in your local machine. But before we do that, let's go and take a look at the pricing real quick. So if you can see here, the starter plan is going to cost you $20 per month. If you play, pay for the yearly plan, if you switch to a monthly plan, it's going to cost you uh, 24 per month if you want to pay a uh, month per month so it's going to cost you 24 dollars per month if you want to run in the managed service that's provided by nnn and you're limited by uh, 2.5k workflow executions and you can only have up to five active workflows so you're limited even with this option so you're, you're going to have to upgrade to a pro plan if you want to use nnn uh, using their managed service so which is something that's kind of on the expensive side so, but I'm going to show you guys first how to run it on your local machine. Then we're going to go ahead and move into the cloud infrastructure. And I'll give you guys a few options there as far as hosting NNN. So let's go and run through how to install it in your local machine. I'm using Windows for my setup. So I have a command prompt running. For this part of the demonstration, we're going to go to the documentation and we're going to browse through the installation steps. There's two ways that you can install uh, NNN. One is uh, using the cloud, and the second way is to do a self-hosting, which we're gonna be doing in this video. So the first thing is we're gonna click on this hosting uh, NNN, so self-hosting NNN. So there's two ways that you can install it. The first way is to use NPM, and the second way is using Docker. We're not gonna be doing Docker uh, for this particular segment of the video, but we're gonna be talking about Docker later on when we go to the Google Cloud platform. But for this part of the video, we're going to go ahead and go with the NPM route. Uh, for this, you're going to have to install uh, Node.js, which is a JavaScript run runtime environment, which will allow you to run NNN, which is what NNN is built on top of. So there's two options that you can do if you want to go with the NPM route. The first one is just to type in npx NNN. Once you have the Node.js runtime environment uh, installed on your machine, you'll have access to NPX and NPM, right? So now you can be able to type this command right here and execute it, and this will install NNN in your local machine. The second option that you can take is you can install it globally using NPM. And for this, you can run this command NPM install NNN and then the dash G flag, which will install globally on your machine. So you can just call NNN 
and then you can execute and run and then from anywhere. The only benefit that I see here when installing with the global option is you can specify the version. So if you want to use a certain version, you can add this at here where you can specify the version that you want to use. Uh, or if you don't specify it, it's always going to get the latest version. And also you have an option to use the, the beta version of it if you do an at next version. And then you can run NNN using NNN or do NNN start in the command line. So let's go and go with the first option here where you can do npx NNN. So this should shouldn't take too long. If you already have downloaded NNN previously, it should only take a couple of seconds. But if you don't have it, then it could take up to a minute. So right now it's pulling the dependencies and it's setting up the configuration and setting up the database schema, which uses uh, SQLite database by default. So it's setting it all up. So it's now it's loading these settings from this path right here underneath my username, underneath this dot NNN directory and all the configuration value is stored in this directory right here. Now the installation process is happening and now the installation is ready on localhost port 5678. So it says right here, editor is now available via 5678 uh, via localhost. And we're going to go and click, uh, control click on this and this will open up a new tab, which you can see here that I already have an existing workflow since I was playing around with it already before. That's one option that you have. Everything is persisted inside of uh, disk already. So if you see the into the dot any NNN, you can be able to see all the files that is being used for the NNN installation. So you can see here the git file and then the database that SQLite, which is the SQLite that's being used to persist the workflow and er anything else that NNN needs to run the platform. So it has some log files here as well, as well as SH directory. So that's how easy it is to install and run in your local machine using Node.js. So let's go ahead and talk about the next option, which is installing it and running it in a cloud infrastructure. So the next, so the next option that we have available as far as hosting it in a cloud infrastructure is if you go to the NNN docs, is you can see all the various options that's available for you as far as the installation is concerned. So we can go to DigitalOcean, you have Heroku, Hesner, Amazon Web Services, Azure, Google Cloud, and then Docker Compose. So we're going to be using Google Cloud Platform to provision our NNN installation. And we're going to be using the default SQL database. They have a Google Cloud option here, which uses Kubernetes. So you can see here that there's different steps here to be able to configure that. So you're going to have to set your uh, kubectl context and you have to create a cluster and all these different things. So, but we're not gonna go with Kubernetes for this particular demo. We're gonna go with a Docker Compose, but we're gonna be using Google Cloud Platform to provision our NNN setup. So I'm gonna be showing you guys how to set this all up. And I'm also uh, gonna be showing you guys how to set up the DNS uh, to be able to point it into your subdomain. So this is a little bit more advanced, but we're gonna be using uh, Docker uh, for this installation. And we're gonna be using uh, traffic uh, which is uh, similar to NNN. Traffic acts as a reverse proxy for NNN, managing incoming traffic and routing requests to the appropriate services, and also a simplifies the SSL and certificate management. So that's going to be the first thing that we're going to be using as a tool. And then the next thing that we're going to be using is Docker. So Docker is a tool that will help you run applications in isolated environments called containers. So it starts off with images and then we're going to be creating containers based on those images. And one thing that we're also going to be using on top of Docker is something called Docker Compose. So Docker Compose is a tool that helps you manage uh, multiple Docker containers as a single application. You're going, to, you're going to be creating a simple file called Docker uh, Compose that YAML where you list all the containers that you need along with there's uh, configuration settings. So I'm going to be showing you guys how that works. But if you go back into the NNN docs, uh, you can see here that there's an, uh, a Docker option here on how to use Docker for the installation. The only problem with using Docker without Docker Compose is that you have to run this command right here, Docker run, and then you have to set up some flags such as a port and then the volume. So it, it can get pretty lengthy. 
And if you scroll down to the bottom, if you want to use an alternative database, in order to set up Postgres DB, you're going to have to run this command right here. So you're going to have to set up the port. You're going to have to set up the environment variable, uh, which you want to specify the DB type. So you're going to have to use this uh, backward slashes in order to be able to fit in that same command. So it can get pretty lengthy uh, versus having Docker Compose where you can define all the different services and the containers that you need to run for that service. So if you're running Postgres, if you're running Redis, and you're running traffic, for instance, you can have to run it and include it in a single command versus a Docker Compose where you can listen all in one YAML file. So I'm gonna be showing you guys how to set up the Docker Compose. We're gonna be setting it all up inside of Google Cloud Platform using their compute engine. If you're not familiar with Google Cloud, they have a free tier. So let, let's go through the different specs in order to be able to get this free tier, right? So in order to get the free tier inside of Compute Engine, you'll have to run an E2 micro VM instance, and then you have to be in this regions right here. So you have to be in Oregon, in Iowa, in South Carolina. And then you have up to 30 gigs of standard persistent disk. And lastly, you're gonna have to be under one gigs of data transfer from Northern America to any region destination. So as long as you fit within the following criteria below, you're gonna be able to take advantage of the free offering that Compute Engine has. In order to use the Google Cloud Platform, you're gonna to have to go to console.cloud.google.com and create an account. And that's gonna be the first step. And the second step is you're gonna to have to put in your billing information. You're gonna to have to have your billing set up for your account for this. And then the next step is we're gonna create a new project within your account. So I already have an ADN project here which is being created at the moment. And then once you have the project created, you're gonna to have to enable uh, the compute engine inside of that project. Up at the top where you can do a search, you can search for compute engines. You can see here that it's already showing up, but if you're not seeing that the popular searches list, you're gonna to have to search for compute engine. And then you can select compute engine from the list. And then you have to enable it, right? So you have to turn on the Compute Engine API for this to work. Since I already have it enabled, I'm gonna go ahead and switch to my demo project, which we're gonna be using to create the VM instance. Once the project has loaded and the Compute Engine has been enabled, you're gonna go ahead and create an instance for the VM. So keep in mind, we're still in the Compute Engine and we're gonna go ahead and create instance. And then you're gonna be able to configure the instance of the VM, right? We need to stick with the E1 micro instance. So on the right hand side, you can see the monthly estimate, which is $25.46. This is just an estimate. This is not the actual amount that you're gonna be paying for out of pocket. So we're gonna go and switch to a different uh, instance of the server. So we're gonna go and click on underneath the machine type. We're gonna go ahead and select the E2 micro. And that's going to automatically lower the price here. And another thing that we have to set up if you scroll down to the bottom is we're going to keep going until we see boot disk. The first thing that we're going to be doing is we can select the operating system. So Debian is one of them. You can change to um, Ubuntu is one of the options. So we're going to go and select that. And then you can select which version of Ubuntu that you want to, to use. We're just going to keep it at 20 for now. And then we're going to be switching to a standard persistent disk according to the documentation. And then we're allowed up to 30 gigs uh, size of persistent disk. So we're going to go and select this. And the price might go up a little bit, which we can ignore for now since this is just an estimate. And the next thing that you have to uh, enable here is the firewall option. So we're going to have to allow HTTP traffic and we're going to be allowing HTTPS traffic and then allow load balancer health checks. And then I think that should be it. So I have the machine type set up and I have the boot test set up and I think that's about it. And then I think the last thing that we, we need to set up here is the region. So one of the regions is Iowa. So it's set for the correct region that we want. So we're going to keep it the Iowa as a region, but if it's not selected, you're going to have to pick from one of the of our options that's available in, inside of their documentation to take advantage of the free cloud, which is Oregon, US West one, and then US Central one, and then US East one. So those are the three regions that you can pick from. 
So we're going to keep it at Iowa for now. And we're just going to go ahead and hit create. So now it's creating the, the VM instance. So this will only take a few seconds to create. So after you have completed provisioning the VM instance, we're going to go ahead and connect to it. So it gave us the internal IP and then the external IP, which will allow us to access the and an installation or whatever service that we installed on that server later on we, we're going to be connecting to it via ssh and by clicking on this link right here it's going to be open up uh, a new a window and it's going to try to authenticate and it will connect to that server so once you're here you're able to connect to the server it will tell you that the list of available updates is more than a week's old to check for new updates run sudo app apt update so we're going to go ahead and run that sudo apt update and then that's going to update the packages installed on the server just to keep it fresh and uh, up up to date so while that's uh doing its thing we're going to go ahead and switch to my notion here so i have the installation step that we're going to be using uh, for this so i already ran the sudo apt update you can see here that's going to be the first thing that we ran on, on this when we ssh into the server the next time we're going to be installing it is we're going to be installing docker in the server uh, we're going to go ahead and copy this and we're going to be going down to the bottom and paste this on the command line and we're going to be uh, doing S sudo apt install docker.io and then that's going to install docker for us and then it's gonna tell us after this operation, 284 megs of additional disk space will be used. We're gonna go ahead and click on yes, a Y, and then click, it, click enter. And that's gonna pull down all the different dependencies that is required to run Docker and get installed in the server. And we're just gonna let it do its thing. Once it has completed, we're gonna go ahead and add additional packages. So if you're not familiar with all the commands that I'm, I'm putting on the screen, it's under, if you go to Docker and if you actually, if you go to the server setups underneath the Docker compose, you'll pretty much see the same steps that I'm running here, except that I modified it a little bit just to match. So we'll have some environment variables in place, but you're, you're going to get the similar uh, steps that's provided in the documentation inside of NNN here. So we're going to go, go through the different steps here. We're going to be installing this CI certificates and then we're going to curl and then we're going to install GNUPG and then LSB dash release. We're going to go ahead and copy this and paste it. And we're just going to go and run it. And then we're going to go and create directory for this under the ETC APT key rings. We're going to go ahead and copy this and paste it inside of the SSH terminal. And then we're going to go and run the APT get update. All right, so once that's been completed, the next step that we're going to be doing is we're going to start Docker and then we're going to be enabling Docker so it will run automatically by default when we restart the service. So we're going to go ahead and copy the first line, which is uh, going to start the, the Docker instance, and then we're going to go ahead and enable Docker uh, for startup. And then the next thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be installing the latest Docker Compose. So as of this recording is 2.30.1. So if you go to the, the release page, that's the current uh, release that they have. So you can replace the version that I have here, the URL. So I have it currently to, to uh, version 2.30.1 and with this URL right here. And it's going to be downloading it into this uh, directory on the server. So we're going to go ahead and copy this command and we're going to paste it in the terminal and we're going to run it. It's going to be downloading the Docker Compose into the folder. The next thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to make the file that we just downloaded executable by executing this command. We're going to go ahead and paste it and then that should have completed. To verify the Docker Compose has been indeed been installed and working, we're going to go ahead and check and verify the version. We're going to go ahead and paste this command right here and as you can see the docker compose version 2.30.1 that's going to be the version that's currently running on the server so that's been completed we're going to run through the docker compose file which is the heart and soul of this installation this is where we declared all the different services that, that we need the volume the network if we have network 
I have two Docker Compose YAML uh, file here, but I was going to go with the Postgres installation, but I decided that I'm going to be saving that later on when we go to a different cloud option. So I have the Postgres setup here where I've defined the Postgres uh, service underneath the services and it has the in, in, in a service as well using this image from Docker Hub. So we're not going to be using this installation, but we're, instead we're going to be using the SQLite instead and we're going to be using the traffic uh, service. So using this image right here. So the version is always declared on the top and this, the different services are set underneath that declaration. So the traffic is one of the service and then it's one of the service. And then each of the service has its own definition, including the environment variable. So instead of having to type all these different environment variables by hand and putting it in this command line, it's everything has been defined here, which makes it nice and convenient. Uh, we've defined also the volumes here for the traffic data and the NNN data. So the traffic data is where all the traffic configuration is going to live. And then NNN underscore data is where all the NNN configuration, including the SQLite database is where we're going to live. So in case or whenever the server restarts, the data is persisted in these configuration files in the server. We're also pulling some environment variables or we're going to be creating an environment uh, .env file later on, which consists of the different environment variables declared in this file where uh, we're going to be pulling all this information from. So I'm going to be showing you guys how to set it up in a little bit, but yeah, so we have some environment variables here, such as the subdomain and the domain name. And then we're going to be pulling that from the environment file. Then I'm going to be showing you guys how to set it up DNS for this to be able to get the, the subdomain under your domain name. So we're going to go and copy this. Actually, before we do this, we're going to go ahead and nano and create this docker dash compose that yaml file we're going to go and copy this and we're just going to go and paste it and this will launch and get us inside of a nano editor and let's go and copy the declaration for the docker compose yaml file we're going to go and paste that here so if you can scroll out to the top you can see the entire file has been listed here including the webhook and then the node environment and so on and so forth we're going to go and con do a control O and hit enter and then control X to get out of this. So the Docker compose has been created. Let's go scroll down to the bottom and let's continue and creating the dot env file, which is where the environment variables are going to live. So we're going to go and copy this command and we're going to go and paste it. And this will get us back in the nano editor and we're going to go and copy the environments here. If you're using Postgres, this is where you define your Postgres variables, such as the username, password, and the name of the database in the username and password. Since we're not using the Postgres database installation, we're just going to go and copy until the domain name. And then we're going to go and paste that inside of the nano editor, right? So you can change the subdomain to whatever you want for the domain name. I'm going to be using my own domain. So I'm going to be using lean code automation make sure you don't have any typos here and i'm going to be putting it inside of nnn subdomain so it's going to be nnn dot your domain and then the next one is for the time zone to automatically have the correct uh, date and time so i have mine set to america dash lost dash underscore angela so if you're using a different time zone you can uh, change it here and then for my email for the ssl uh, certificate i'm going to be using my own email right here so once that's been set make sure you don't have any typo and we're going to go ahead and hit Control o and then hit enter and then Control x just to get out and then the next thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be setting up the volume for the traffic data and the volume for the data folder so this is going to be the folders where the data is going to be persisted for our configuration for our nnn installation we're going to go ahead and copy uh, the traffic first and run it and that will only take a few seconds and then the next thing is for the uh, for the NNN underscore data. We're going to go ahead and execute this. And that's done. Before we start the Docker Compose, we can go and switch and set up the DNS. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to set up the DNS for my website. So underneath the advanced DNS, so if you're using Namecheap, you have to just go to advanced DNS, just depending on what you're using for your uh, provider, for your domain. So I went to my advanced DNS. I'm using namecheap.com. 
So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add new record and I need to add a, a record here. And then for the host, I need to type in NNN. And then we're going to go back into Google Cloud and we're going to go ahead and copy the external IP. That's going to be the IP address that we're going to be using to set up here. So I'm going to get rid of uh, everything else, such as the HTTPS. So all we need is just the IP address for this. So we're going to set up an A record and then we're going to be setting up NNN as the, the subdomain and it's going to be pointing to the server. And we're just going to go ahead and click on save changes. That should set up the DNS to point into our NNN installation inside of Google Cloud Platform. So we can go and switch to SSH and we can go and run the Docker Compose uh, YAML file. So we can create the containers now by executing sudo docker dash compose up. So this will bring up uh, the containers that's required that we have defined inside of the Docker Compose YAML file, right? Start any token. Actually, there's probably some. So you encounter something like this, you're, there's probably something wrong with the actual YAML file. We're going to go ahead and see what's wrong by going through it. It's probably some typo. Okay. So the spacing and how everything is lined up inside the file matters. So you have to make sure that's correct. We're going to go ahead and just make sure that the volume, all the list of uh, volume matches the indentation for the environment. So we're going to go and hopefully that works. We're going to go ahead and control O and then enter control X to get up. And then if I click on up, it's going to go ahead and bring up the previous commands. So we're going to go ahead and, and do a sudo docker dash compose up again and see if that works. So now it's going to be uh, pulling the images from Docker Hub that I've defined inside of the Docker Compose YAML file. It's going to be pulling those images to create the containers for this. All right. So this can take like a minute or so. It shouldn't be too long. All right. So now we are in the process of the database migration. So it's using SQLite. It created the auto generated uh, encryption key, which is stored in this location right here, which is a default location where all the configuration values are stored. And then permissions are also uh, stored here as well as in this configuration file. And then uh, it's able to start the migration process for the database. Now it's just going through the steps. It says the editor is now available via the nnn.leancodeautomation.com, which is like an auto-generated uh, value based on the configuration in the NNN. So we're just going to go ahead and see if actually it works now. So you can go to your domain in my website. So currently have this loaded up on the screen. You can see that the site can't be uh, reached. So if you refresh it, you can see that the installation uh, page is going to show up. So that's how you know that it's actually working. And if you go back here into the Docker Compose, you can see that I can't do anything on the screen since I'm in the undetached mode. So uh, I can go and actually just sign up for an account just to make sure everything's working first before uh, shutting down the, the containers. So I'm gonna go and pass, type in some password, one, two, three, hit next. And then I'm just gonna go get started and gonna go and skip this. And then I can test this out, make sure it works, which it should. And the next thing that I wanna do here before I wrap up this section is I wanna go back into the uh, SSH terminal. We're gonna go ahead and do control C, control C just to get out. So you notice here that once I do that, once I get out of that terminal session, it actually stopped the container. So if you go back here into the website, if I refresh this, uh, it shouldn't load anything because we shut it down. So. Uh, the, way, the best way to get out of this or actually the best way to actually run it is in detached mode. So and the reason why I did the undetached mode was to be able to see the, the logs that was it was producing since it was the first time. I want to be able to see the, the migration process and what type of things are involved during the installation. Also, I want to be able to show you that to you guys. So if you want to run this in detached mode, we're going to go ahead and hit up again. And this time we're going to be adding the dash D flag, which means it's detached. So it will run the uh, start up the multiple containers and then we'll able to run some additional com commands here if you want to. So now it's running. We can go back into the page and refresh it again. 
after a few seconds, our internet installation should be up and running. So now it's running, I can do whatever I want. And if you want to see the, the running containers or using the terminal, is we're gonna be going and executing the command called sudo uh, docker-compose ps, and that's gonna list out all the, the available containers that are available on the server so you can see uh, if it's up and running. So you can see that it was created six minutes ago and the status is up, it, it's been up for 36 seconds. And then it's gonna tell you the, the ports and the image and all that fun information. So yeah, that's how easy it is to install and uh, set up your DNS uh, for your subdomain and install it inside of a Google Cloud platform. So the next thing we're gonna be covering today is a platform called render.com, uh, which is one of the options as well if you wanna provision your NNN installation in the cloud. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at the service and we can go ahead and look at the pricing. So as you can see here in the pricing page, they have a hobby plan, which will allow you to uh, play around with it and without having to pay uh, for anything. So in this particular setup that I'm gonna be showing you guys, we're gonna be using Superbase as the backend uh, database. Since NNN supports Postgres and Superbase is using Super, uh, Postgres SQL in the back, we're gonna be able to utilize Superbase for our backend. So if you're not familiar with Superbase, it's one of the more popular database options out there. It's also an open source. They touted themselves as an open source Firebase alternative, which is nice. And instead of just relying on Firebase, you have an alternative pricing wise, and you're able to create projects and try it out for free without having to spend any money, which is nice. So you can see under the free plan, they have an unlimited API request. And as long as you stay within the 50,000 active monthly users, you're going to be fine. It's using the 500 megs database space, which is plenty for most of the applications that we're building for small applications, five gigs of bandwidth, one gigs of file storage, which is plenty enough. We're going to be using Superbase database as the backend database where we're going to be so storing the NNN workflows and the users and everything else that NNN requires behind the scenes. So we're going to be using this in conjunction with render and I'm going to be showing you guys how to set it up. So for render.com, they have a hobby tier, which will allow you to play around with render.com without having to pay for anything. And you can use their services. And the only thing about render.com is the service will be shut down or it'll be put uh, in idle if you're not using it. So that's kind of the only thing that to keep in mind if using render. So if you want something that's gonna be running uh, 24 seven, you might wanna consider the higher plan for this and you can probably get away with just the hobby for now. But let's go ahead and set this up and I'll show you guys how to get in it and installed in this server. So the first thing that we're gonna be doing is we're, we're gonna go ahead and switch to Superbase real quick and we're gonna go to their dashboard. And then from here, you can see that I have I already have three databases here. All right, so I have to delete one of the projects inside of my Superbase account, but we're gonna go ahead and, and hit a new project. And then from here, you have to choose your organization and you can choose your organization here. It looks like I have too many projects. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this one as well. We're going to go to the project settings and we're going to go to general underneath that. We can just delete this project. So I'm just going to go ahead and type in that project name to continue and delete this project. So from here, I already have only have one uh, database installed. I'm going to go ahead and just click on the new project choose the organization and I'm going to go and type in NNN and then for the database password, this is something that you're going to need. So I'm going to go ahead and generate a random password here. So you're going to have to create a password and then you have to set aside so that we can put it in the installation inside of render. So I can pick my region here. I'm going to be sticking with West US. This is close to where I'm at. We're going to go ahead and click on create new project. All right, from here, I can just let it cook and, and just let it do its thing. So we're going to go and switch to render. So we're back in render. Let's go ahead and set up render real quick while the super base uh, is be, uh, projects being provisioned. Let's go ahead and click on new and we're going to go ahead and click on web service. Then from here, you can click and go to your own Git repository. You can also pull from an existing public Git repository or you can also pull from an existing Docker registry image. 
So one of those two is the option or it can come from your own project in the Git repository. We're going to go and go with the Git, GitHub uh, repository. So I'm going to go and look for it. Let's go back to the NNN website and let's go and click on where the GitHub is. So I'm, I'm inside of GitHub right now and I'm going to just copy that URL from GitHub and I'm just going to go and go back into render. I'm going to go and switch to public Git repository. And I'm just going to paste it. So this is not the Git where you, you can clone the URL. This is the actual URL of the GitHub repository. So that's something to keep in mind. So we're going to go and connect this. And then from here, it was able to detect that the language used for the project is Node.js. And then we're going to be using the master branch. The release candidate is going to be on the master branch but you can also feel free to go switch to a different branch as well if you want to use the cutting edge version of NNN. And then from here, you can choose uh, the region, root directory. Some of these are default, so you don't have to do anything here. It was able to detect the build command that's used to build and produce the artifacts. And then it was able to detect the command to start the project. So that's pretty important. And then from here, you can choose the instant type. So. Earlier, you saw that there's a pro plan, but there's an actually a starter plan that you can use, which is cheaper than the $25 standard. So it's still the same specs as the free plan, except that this is going to be available 24 seven. So the server is not going to go in idle. So if you have some workflows that's going to run 24 seven, you might want to consider switching to a starter plan, which only costs $7 a month. But for our use case, we're just going to be going ahead and switch to a free plan but free free to switch to a starter plan if you want to or unless you have some serious workload so let's go and switch and choose free and everything else looks good here you don't have to set up anything uh, you can also set up some of the environment variables here which i'm going to be showing you guys how to set up in a little bit one thing that we're going to be able to set up here is the node version by default as of the time of recording it's going to be using the node version 23 so NNN will only allow you to run it using Node.js between the version of 18 and 23. So we have to use the versions that's within those parameters. So we're going to be switching to Node version 22, which is the, the highest that NNN installation is going to accept. This is why I need to set it up here. But other than that, we can set up all the various environment variables uh, later on at the various stage. So we're, let's go and deploy the web service, then the Superbase instance should be available at this point. So if you go to Superbase database configuration, you can see all the settings or configuration values that we're going to need to populate in render to be able to switch to the Postgres database instance in Super. We're just going to go and let the NADN web service provision itself. If you go to events, you're going to see here the deployment process where it's at. So this is going to take a little bit of time. Let's go ahead and set up the environment variables inside of render. So inside of notion, I have some NNN variables here. Let's be fine already. So by default, since NNN is using SQLite uh, for its database, uh, we're going to be needing to switch and change the DB type to Postgres DB, and then we can set the uh, DB configuration values. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be setting the DB type. Let's go ahead and switch to render. We're going to go ahead and hit edit inside of the envir environment tab. And we're going to go and add a new variable for DB type. And then this one is going to be Postgres DB. So I'm going to go ahead and switch back and forth here. The next thing is we're going to be setting the Postgres, the name of the database. So we're going to be setting that up. We're going to add a new one. And then this is going to be coming from the database name, which is this one right here. We're going to be choosing the database name and that's going to be the database name here. And we're going to add a new variable. We're going to put the host. We're going to switch to the host and then inside of Superbase, we're going to be using the host here. So this is not going to be the connection string. This is just the host, which is the URL to be able to connect to Superbase for Postgres. So we're going to go and copy that and paste it inside of the host. And then we're going to add a new variable. We're going to add a password. And then I'm going to go ahead and copy the password that I use to create the project for Superbase. So the next thing that we're going to be adding is we're going to be adding the 
support. I'm not sure if this is necessary, but we're going to be needing to switch to 6543. I believe that's the default port for render. So we're going to go ahead and paste that in. We're going to be setting the Postgres DB user. We're just going to go ahead and add that in and then going back to Superbase. And then we're going to copy the one that's been created for us. So uh, we're going to go and set that inside of render. And I believe that's it. We have to set up the webhook later on once render has given us the custom domain to access the actual NNN installation. So we're going to go ahead and set the webhook URL later on, but we're just going to go ahead and add that here. Oh, actually it's created the URL already. We're just going to go ahead and click this one to copy it to clipboard and we're going to go ahead and paste this in. So the webhook URL, we have to define it since it's default to localhost. We want to make sure that we've swapped this out. So it's pointing to the correct webhook URL. So all we have to do at this point is we can just go and save build and redeploy. So it was able to cancel the previous deployment and now it started a new deployment with the new environment variables that I've set inside of the environment tab. So let's go and click on the deploy. So it's creating a new deployment again. So let's go ahead and inspect render here real quick. So you can see it's a very clean environment you can look at the metrics as far as the network bandwidth and all that stuff. You can also enable scaling as well if you want to scale it. So you can see here that scaling is not supported for the free instance types. Upgrading to the starter instance type of $7, $7 per month also includes zero downtime. So this is the part I was kind of mentioning earlier where if there's no activity, it's going to go ahead and go to idle mode. So if you want something that's going to be running 24 seven, you're going to you have to enable and switch to a starter instant type so you can run applications 24 seven. So, and you'll have your persistent disk and all that stuff. So, and the reason why I chose Superbase, so the data is persisted across and I can inspect it from anywhere. I can go to Superbase and inspect the data. I can move to a different installation of NNN without having to worry about pre-configuring the database again. All my workflows are going to be carried since it, the Superbase or Postgres instance is isolated and it's in a different uh, server. So that's kind of the beauty of having it hosted in Superbase. So we're going to go ahead and cancel this and we're going to go back to events inside for render. And we're just going to go and let it uh, finish here. So in, in a few moments, it should do the migration process as well. Again, since we're using Postgres and we'll, we're going to be able to see the different tables and you'll see that it's actually connected to Superbase. All right, so the build has completed. It looks like it's uploading the build now. So the artifacts, once it's built the node project. So the only downside into using something like Node.js is it will have to go to the different steps of deployment. So it has to run the build. And once the build has been completed, it's going to take the artifact and it's going to push it up to the server. So which takes a little bit of time uh, because it has to pull down the dependencies and some of them is going to be pretty large. There's going to be quite a bit of the dependencies involved uh, when you're using Node.js. So that's something that to keep in mind, uh, if you want something uh, quicker, you might want to look into something like Docker and Render. It's been running for a good couple of minutes now. So right now at this time, it's like two minutes and 46 uh, seconds and it hasn't completed setting up the project itself. So let's go ahead and wait till that completes. All right, so after some time, you can see that the migration uh, process has also completed. It ran through the different steps involved into provisioning the database. So it's able to detect the database for this installation. So it's able to finish the migration. And so it started the migration and then it also finished some of the migration steps. So let's go and scroll down to the bottom. So you can see the new uh, primary port detected is 5678. They start and deploy to update network network configuration. What's currently is running, it says right here, editor is now available via localhost 5678, and you can access it using this URL right here. But before we actually go to the actual installation, this says the service is live and it's running on this port 5678. So let's go and take a look at Superbase real quick. And if you go to the table editor, you'll see here the different tables involved in the NNN editor. So everything was set up 
the installation inside of Render was able to connect to the Superbase instance uh, of, of Postgres, it was able to create all these tables. So if you go back into Render, now you can go and click on this custom URL. You can see that you'll have a brand new NNN installation ready to go. So you can sign up for an account. I'm gonna get and just put in my account here. And some password. Hit next. And then as, as soon as I sign up, so if you go back to Superbase again, if I inspect the users table, I should have my new user in the database. All right, so the last thing I want to share with you guys is something called Railroad.app. So it's one of the many options out there as far as provisioning your own NNN installation. And what's cool about this is the tool is not necessarily free, but they give you a $5 credit uh, to, to get started. So it's not really free per se, but uh, what's cool about this is the simplicity of the tool. So I'm mean, gonna show you guys how it works, but essentially you can deploy using, using GitHub or you can use one of the many templates that they have available. So let's go ahead and scroll down to the bottom. So what's really cool about this tool is that it's very simple. The strength of the tool is its simplicity. And if you look down and go to the templates, you can see the many apps that they have available that's ready for you to provision your application. So if you want to install NN on the server, you have many options. And if you want an NN setup with Postgres, they have templates just for that. So everything is pretty much pre-configured according to the, uh, the templates and they're ready to go. So you can deploy a MongoD setup, you can deploy a Redis setup or Strapi or WordPress. So there's a bunch of stuff here that you can de deploy right away. And it doesn't really take long to deploy one of these. So we're going to go ahead and type in, although you can see here that there's already a NNN with workers. So if we click on it, you're going to see the different uh, services that's going to be part of this installation uh, when you click on the deploy now. So this is the person that uh, created it and then how many projects are using it and how many active projects are is, is using this uh, template. So you can see that it's, it's pulling the NNN IO image. So I believe this is like the image for this project. It's pointing to Bitnami and then it's also pulling Redis. And then for the worker is also creating a worker service and uh, it's, it's installing Postgres as well as part of the, the template. So when you click on deploy now, it's just going to deploy a, a full blown application. Everything has been pre-configured for you. You can configure each individual one of these. So you can see here that it's pointing to Docker Hub. That's where it's pulling the image from to create this instance for this container. So you can go and click on deploy now and then you know, it'll pretty much deploy for you. So it's just a matter of seconds. You'll have a full blown application ready and pre-configured. You don't have to do anything as far as configuration. Everything's set uh, based on the template and the variables are ready to go. Momentarily here, it's going to be showing you the, the different parts of the service. So in the logs, we'll give you the real time uh, logs of the deployment or if there's any errors, you're going to be able to see here. Similar to our previous installation, you'll see the migration process for the database and is also able to pick up that it's using Postgres database. So it's going to automatically migrate and it's going to do the migration process to create the database schema that's going to be used for by NNN installation. So let's go ahead and scroll down to the bottom. So recovery Redis connection. So setting up Redis as well. Q error. The second like error right here. Let's see what's happening. Let's, we're just going to go ahead and let it finish. But you can also go to the settings where you can set up the environments and the shared variables as well. And then each service will have its own environment variable. So this is specific to the project settings. So you're not going to be able to see anything here. But you can play around with it. You can do some integration here and connect to Vercel. And also you can delete the projects as well. But the general stuff here, you can change the name of the project. And you can also see the usage of the application and how much it's costing you per month. But let's go back into the architecture and I'm going to refresh it. Sometimes it doesn't really refresh it. So you can inspect the Postgres database here and you double click on, on it and you can see the data in it. You can see the required variables. And then you can also see the different environment variables and you can see the, the password, the URL, the metrics and the different settings. 
But what we're mostly interested in here is the NNN installation. We're going to go ahead and click on the NNN itself. And you can see here that it was deployed using Docker, right? So this entire architecture was built and are connected together, right? And you can see how it was deployed. And this one was deployed using Docker. So you can see the deployment succeeded. And then you can see the different environment variables involved in this installation. So if you look at the, the DB type, it was able to automatically just fill out the Postgres database because it we want to use Postgres database and it already set up the username and the port and the password and the host. So all of these different things that is required to provision an ADNN installation is available and it's ready to go. All you need to do is at this point is go to the deployments and click on the custom URL and it's pretty much ready to go. And you can fill this out and type in the email. I just want to show, show it to you guys because how easy it is to uh, provision an ADNN instance in railways. So yeah, so that's the extent of what I would like to share for today. So in the future, I'll be producing some more NNN videos. So watch out for those ones. I hope that this video has been insightful and have provided you with some value. So feel free to hit like on this video. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so as I will be doing more videos like this in the future. And like always, I hope to see you guys on the next video.